Hi, I'm Cara Lambert, and today I'm talking on the Online Prosperity Show about understanding the biopsychology and how you can use that in your business. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today on the show, we've brought you the business consultant herself, Cara. Cara, how are you doing, my love? I'm well, thank you, Prosper, and you? Fantastic. Happy to have you on the show today. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you've probably ever um, wanted to understand and use the power of buyer psychology to grow your business. Now, if you're going to be watching this video, um, me and Kara are going to be talking about how she actually helps businesses achieve their goals through psychology and finding out how people buy, what is their motivation and what actually makes them come back for more. Now we could go on and on, but Kara has 16 years in studying psychology and she knows that marketing for business is pretty much a practice of mani manipulating customer behavior. And a lot of businesses try to show that maybe their brand is better than others, but conversations are happening in the minds and um, you know heads of our customers and we need to be part and parcel of that so that they get to choose our brands and we have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, we could go on and on. Like I said, Kara has a wealth of knowledge in this department. She's formulated her own philosophy that we're gonna be unraveling on this show today. Now, Kara, thank you so much. Tell, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started um, in this whole uh, business of psychology. Thanks, Prosper. So um, I have a degree in psychology um, and a graduate diploma of management. Um, I actually started online work um, when I started working for the Australian federal government. That's how I started online. Um, and this was like 2000. So a long time before e-business was big, you know, yes, the internet did exist, but Facebook didn't. Social media did not exist. Um, and I developed a, um, a number of apps and platforms with um, the Department of Veterans Affairs, who I was working for, then for communication, online communication. Um, so that was communication with veterans and communications with um, health providers. So really early, early days in e-business, but I continued through that. Um, and it got to the point where I got sick of working for the government. I know it's crazy. Like my dad said to me, Kara, you have a job in government. You have a job for life. And I went, no, nah, it's not good anymore. It's not working for me. So I started a little handmade business. Um, I was making hair bows and selling them from a little office in my house. And I had set up a Facebook page and I was using that. And I grew my Facebook page um, quite quickly. This was in a time before Facebook ads. It was a time before the Facebook algorithm. Um, if anyone, it seems like, you know, back in the day, you know, we had to travel through, trudge through snow and sleet and all of those kinds of things. Um, but what I learned in that time was that if I was able to keep my clients involved and coming back and a reason to keep coming back to me, um, then I had them and I was, it was about what their needs were. Um, because you could go anywhere to buy a hair bow. Um, you can buy a yard of ribbon and tie it up in your daughter's hair, but it was why they kept coming back to me rather than the shop or the other providers. And it was, what I realized was it was something that I had learned as a manager in the public sector as well. And it was about what motivated them. And then it was, I realized, hang on a minute, this is all psychology. Um, and it was also um, something that I'd studied in, cause I started a master's in public sector management when I was at uni, at, at, in the government. And it was something that I'd studied there was also what motivated staff in the public sector. It all kind of came together. And over the years I've developed this philosophy and this method. Um, 
and it really formulates around the person. So much of what we see online now is about the business um, rather than the user and what motivates the user. Um, because I think we've forgotten that it's the user that picks up the phone. It's the user that presses the button on the website to buy. It's the user that sends you an email. Um, it's the user, not the business. So it's using the language that the user would do, but um, it's more than just that. It's understanding what motivates them because you've got to understand what makes them press that button. What makes them make that phone call to you? What makes them choose your business over the competitors? What makes them choose my hair bows over going and buying a yard of ribbon? Um, and all of those kinds of things and using that in marketing and not just, you know what, I've got this great thing. Come and buy it. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. Um, and thank you so much for sharing with us your journey there. Um, what you just mentioned there, a lot of people can't think back in the time when social media did not exist. And if you ask somebody right now, do you have a business? They say, yes, I've got a Facebook page and they want to call that a business. It's the people that come and patronize your business or people that actually buy your commodities that constitutes how much of a business you actually have tomorrow. So thank you so much for bringing up that subject. It's people that we're selling to, not hashtags. Correct. Correct. Great stuff. No, in the time that you were transitioning from, you know, a federal business to starting your own lemonade stand, which uh, <laughs> how a lot of That's people would have started, <laughs> what sort of, um, what sort of hardships would you have faced um, that a lot of people would, um, you know, want to, you know, uh, say this is something that, you know, happens when you're starting your own business? Yeah, so some of the hardships that I faced were ridiculously long hours, like seriously long hours. Um, I started, I have two school-aged children, so I started the the business when my youngest was about to start school. Um, so I'm the opposite of what most women will find. They will often start their business when their youngest is um, not at school. And then when the youngest is at school, they will go back to work. I was the exact opposite. Um, so long hours. Um, the other thing was competitors dealing with competitors and going, oh my gosh, they've still stolen my idea. Um, that was another one that I dealt with. Um, the green eyed monster of, of that comes with that. <laughs> that was a big one. Um, the, the whole competitor comparison trap. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think they were the two main ones. Um, and balancing, balancing everything, like Absolutely. balancing being a mom and a wife and a business owner and. Great stuff. Great stuff. Now, Kara, in your opening statement, you did mention that uh, people want a reason to come back for more. All right. It's not just a one click transaction. Um, you want to make sure as a business person, you, um, you know, bringing people coming in uh, for more. What sort of things would you advise, um, you know, business owners of today uh, that they can do either on their website or in their customer service to actually find out um, or know what the, the reasons why people, people keep coming to them? Yeah, so what started me on that kind of stuff, Prosper, was um, I was a beta tester for a business program. And part of it was doing client avatar work. Um, so you, your average, you know, I, imagine your ideal client, what's an average day in their life, you know, what's their name, what's their family like, um, those kinds of things. And it just didn't gel for me. It, I, I was so uninspired by it. So what I realized was that there's psychology that sits behind it. Um, you know, I'm a 44 year old woman with two teenage kids. 
I, what motivates me is very different to the next 44 year old woman with two teenage kids. Right. So it's the, the client avatar work I realized didn't work. So it's really about their motivators. That's what keeps them coming back. Um, the other thing that keeps them coming back and there's research that sits out there, it's how closely aligned someone feels to their brand. So, you know, that traditional no like and trust keeps us buying from a brand. The big thing behind that is appealing to someone's self image. That's what draws people closer. This is what scientists and psychologists have found. So if you can appeal to someone's self image, you'll draw them closer to you. They will know you like you and trust you more. And then they'll be easier to sell to sell to. So what's their self image made up of? It's their psychology. It's not my self image is not a 44 year old mother of two teenagers. That's not my self image. I am more than that. Um, I am my beliefs, I am my values, I am my needs, I am my goals, and I am my fears. That's my self-image. That's what motivates me. That's what makes me who I am. That's what um, determines my decisions, whether I choose one business over another. So that's how I got people coming back to me. I understood what motivated them. And I spoke to that. I spoke to their self image and I had them coming back. The other things was consistency. Um, so as a hair accessory maker, every Sunday night at eight 30, I used to post a hairstyle, um, a, a tutorial, not my own clearly because I don't have long enough hair. Um, but I would post a hairstyle video that I would find. I get messages from women going, if I was, at, it was nine o'clock and I hadn't posted, I get messages going, Cara, where's the hairstyle? They knew that 8.30 on a Sunday night, I turned up and they expected it. So if you understand what motivates your audience and you turn up for them, you will have them. You, you need to show that you're reliable. <laughs> you care so absolutely i i absolutely love what you mentioned uh with regards to the whole traditional um avatar that's a certain age certain income certain lifestyle um as opposed to you know w w you know the kind of people that you think you are attracting and people have become so dynamic and so diverse these days I think what you've just mentioned is brilliant in as much as your worldview, your values, your uh, upbringing or whatever is what actually then constitutes, um, you know, people following you, liking your stuff and actually eventually buying from you. Now, in this world uh, that we now live in, especially in the social media world where you've got to take a stand for something, um, you know, recently in Australia, there was a whole... Um, maybe same-sex marriage and there's probably uh, some sort of political agenda that's being pushed in the public eye. Do you think that also constitutes to uh, people maybe um, not patronizing your business, just like what Nike did with um, uh, the, the latest uh, campaign that they did and people were burning the Nike shoes? which I find stupid because they bought them already. Nike had made the money. But as a small business owner, you can't afford that sort of negative publicity. So would you, what would you suggest that people um, show up, like you say, as, um, you know, on, on their social media? I think you need to show up as your authentic self. So when I talk to business owners about this and um, I talk to you know, uh, sole traders through to corporates. So sole traders are easier to talk to um, because as a sole business owner, you are your business, right? Um, so I say, look, you've got your own set of motivators. Your business has its set of motivators and your clients have their motivators. So if your motivators and your business motivators line up in some instances, talk about them. 
seriously talk about them because we are hard. The, Brene Brown has an amazing quote and it's summarized as we are hardwired for connection. People are hardwired for connection. You know, this is why we do this, Prospa, you and I, because we like to connect with people. We like to learn and grow. So if you connect with them honestly and you share a little bit of behind the scenes, this is another thing that psychologists say about um, drawing people into your brand is offering them some kind of exclusivity. Now, that doesn't have to mean a discount. That could be behind the scenes stuff something that they're not going to get anywhere else. So if, for example, you showed me stuff from behind the scenes and I got to know Prosper behind the scenes, well, then I'd feel a little bit more um, drawn to you. Not saying that you don't, but, you know, I, as a comparison. Um, then the next person who goes, no, this is me as business front. This is what you get, which is fine. I understand that some people aren't prepared to show behind the scenes. But if you want to state your political views um, or state an opinion, go for it. Realise that there are going to be consequences of those actions. You will polarise people. Um, I'm not a big proponent of the whole you've got to polarise to mobilise. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I'm a big believer in you have to be your authentic self. Um, and, you know, big brands like Coca-Cola and Nike, they spend a lot of time developing their brand story. The benefit of a small business is that they live their brand story. So why not share it? You're actually an editor at an advantage over those bigger brands. You live your brand story, so do it. Okay. Hashtag just do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it really depends. Know that there's consequences, but live your business honestly and authentically because that's what we want. That's what buyers want. I think we're, we're a bit fed up with inauthentic businesses, to be honest. Great stuff. Um, I'm really loving, um, you know, this talk. It's all about self-image. Um, it's all about alignment. It's all about authenticity. And we haven't even talked about the whole tactic of marketing, which basically means we really need to understand who we are first in order to, to, to bring our, um, you know, our message out there to people. So do you have any sort of strategies that you walk people through in order for them to actually find out if they're living in their own authentic sort of voice or are they presenting their business in a light that um, other humans would actually want to be a part of what they're doing? Um, I quite literally t sit them down with a sheet with those, those titles, you know, what are the values? What are the beliefs? What are the fears? What are the needs? What are the goals? What are your personal ones? What are your business ones? What are your client ones? I literally walk them through that. Um, yes, I have a sheet of values. Yes, I have a definition of beliefs that I use. Fears, needs, and goals, most people understand. Values and beliefs, people get a little hazy around. Um, because they're, they're very psychological and they're not spoken much of. So, um, you know, speaking of our own values and our own belief systems, we kind of keep that to ourselves. <laughs> it's not, not something we speak a lot, um, very openly on. So great stuff. Now, Kara, somebody will be watching this show right now and is actually really motivated by what you've talked about and have learned a thing or two from, you know, the dialogue we've just had. Um, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you? So I am Cara Lambert.com all over social media. Um, you will find me everywhere with that. Um, my website is caralambert.com. Um, and you can email me at cara at caralambert.com. So I've tried to keep things very simple. Um, using my name because people want um, me. I am my brand. Um, so it's just searching my name and you'll find me. 
Absolutely. And when people knock on your door right now, what's your usual go-to advice or what's the first thing that you normally look at within their business so that, you know, they have an understanding because sometimes goals, values can be a bit confrontational. So people can have an understanding of, you know, what to expect when they visit your website or your business. So when you visit my website, you know, there, there are, there's a lot of information on there. Um, I've been blogging for four years. So there's a lot of information about, you know, business budgets and uh, social media and the psychology behind business and the psychology behind pricing and the psychology that sits behind Facebook. Um, so there's a lot of information on the blogs. Read the blogs. Like I said, there's four years of blogging there at this stage um read through it um i've often had messages come back from people as like i couldn't sleep so i jumped to a website and read three blogs and three hours later um i had this sorted and this sorted <laughs> sorted this sorted. no sleep but i'm sorted <laughs> um <laughs> but uh, there's there's that um there's Resources. So um, there's a free resources index um, at the, the top of the website that you can actually grab all of the, the opt-ins that I have. So um, stuff about goal setting. And it's um, actually the goal setting stuff is actually really quite good. Um, it's about, I learned it when I went through the Australia, uh, the Telstra Business Woman of the Year Award program. Um, I was nominated for Telstra Business Woman of the Year a few years ago. And so there were questions that they asked us that I thought, wow, this is incredibly insightful. And I read it as a workshop um, a few times. Grab that. If you're just starting out, and you're trying to work out where am I going? What am I doing? Grab that um, resource. Um, if <laughs> exactly <laughs> This is more, this is about purpose and goals and things like that as well. Um, if you're struggling with engagement on social media, there's a resource there on how to engage your audience online, um, which goes through all of these things. So there's lots of resources on my website. Since we're on YouTube, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel and I have a business motivation um, list we can it's the videos that I love um, I can't actually remember if I have any of my own but there are there are videos in there there are Tony Robbins videos in there there are Simon Sinek videos in there in fact I just added um, a video that his latest book is based upon um, into that motivational list so subscribe to the YouTube channel watch those videos look at the videos that I've put up there um, because there's a lot of live stream videos that I've done that are on my YouTube channel so dig in is what I'm looking at because there's a wealth of knowledge up here that you guys can benefit from absolutely absolutely thank you so much so like what Kara says there's four years worth of um blogging and videos and all that material that you can utilize over there but the insomnia is sold separately now as you can tell um Kara you know will definitely help you understand and use the power of bio psychology to grow your business and as you have noticed from the show and what we've been talking about most of the stuff that is actually uh done and is um you know influences all motivates customers usually starts with you the um the business owner now Kara, i can't thank you enough for your time your wealth of knowledge and your expertise on the show today um and hope to be seeing more of you in the future um as, as your business progresses Thanks, Prosper. Thank you for the time and thank you guys for watching us through. I hope you've been able to glean some information from this session that uh, Prosper and I have done. Thank you so much.